everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com and welcome to another special live episode. We're here live today reviewing and recapping the latest episode of The Walking Dead Season 8. Whether you're listening live via Shelf Addiction or Spreaker, leave us a comment. We would love to hear your thoughts on last night's episode. If you enjoy live episodes, go ahead and share this on Twitter right now. Show your support by rating the podcast and leaving a positive review on Apple Podcasts or your listening app of choice. Joining me today is PCS co-host, fellow TV junkie, and indie author, Lisa Orban. If you're listening to this episode after we're off the air, you can still leave a comment. You can also find me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. You can also find Lisa on Twitter at Lisa Orban Author. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com or leave an internet voice message via SpeakPipe. The link is below in the show notes. Hey, Lisa, what's up, lady? Oh, not too much. Watching the snow melt. <laughs> oh. oh, I know. It's actually raining right now, and it was snowing right before I came in the door. So it's it's turned to rain, but it might turn back to snow. You never know. We got another, I think, six inches of snow yesterday. Yikes. I know, and it, but it's supposed to be 70 on Wednesday, so whatever. <laughs> uh, I know. I think that day is supposed to get 66 for us if we're lucky. I'm <coughs> telling you, this is the worst spring ever. Just, you know, saying. I don't know. I know. I'm beginning to think there's not actually going to be a spring. It's just going to be just like psychotic bouncing back and forth, and then summer's going to stumble in at some point going, hey, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Am I on? Is it my turn? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. I hear what you're saying. It's crazy. Um, it so, is. what did you think about last night's episode, though? I just want to say before anything else, I picked the right person for who uh, Negan picked up. Yes! Me, me too. I mean, I thought the whole time that Simon was going to go because I'm like, <laughs> they usually, you know, have a trend of killing one person before the season finale. And I'm like, it's going to be Simon. I mean, we are oh, both yeah. like, it's Simon all day long. His time is done. But, oh, poor Dwight. Oh. Man, oh, Negan played him like yeah. a fiddle, man. So, you know how we were talking about last week, who do you think was in the car? Did you think it would be that lady? Yeah, that's what I said. That's That's yeah. the one I picked. The yeah. one that got away from the firefight. I'm like, yes, I was right. It was her. You know because- what? And it's funny because I totally forgot about her. I really did. I mean, it was like, I mean, I knew she was there, but mm-hmm. I forgot about her. It's weird. Well, it, but because I kept kind of bringing her up, you know, what if she's gotten back? What if she's gotten back? And, and I know the, the, the longer time went on, the more Dwight relaxed. Oh, she's not coming back. She must be dead. Because he knew that he had wounded her, but yeah. she got yeah. away, and uh, she was stumbling ever closer to the, you know, back to the sanctuary. Yeah, it was but, uh, pretty sad. Yeah, and you know, and, and I'm going to say something else for for uh, uh, Daryl being the tracker that he is. I cannot believe that Eugene got away from him. Oh, Eugene. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. I get what you're saying. I mean, I'm surprised that he got all the way back to his place without them Mm -hmm. catching him. But Eugene, he is nasty. So not only is he a little rodent, he is disgusting. Like that Mm -hmm. scene. Oh, my God, you guys. That scene when he just vomited on Rosita. I'm like, oh, that is so disgusting. I, like, had a visceral reaction. Like, why? Why? Oh, and you know, it's because it was macaroni and cheese oh. and sardines. Oh, God. Oh, and sardines stink. And, you, I mean, oh, they, you know, they, they had to smell worse coming back up. They had to. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> seriously, that Rosita should have shot him immediately. Like, dude, you just threw up whatever this is on me. You're dead. Mm-hmm. That's well, it. But she, you know, she had the same reaction I think anyone would have. Being unexpectedly thrown up on, ah! <laughs> you know, <laughs> disgusting. Oh you know, where you god! Do the, you do the little half jump back. You know, you got the arms wide, the the, the downward look of horror. Ah! Yeah, like what just happened? What happened right now? <laughs> is this real? But, you know, and, and the thing of it is, is I mean, because so you know, because Eugene ran through that, you know, ash pit of you know dead bodies and whatever, mm-hmm. and then hid under it, but. Again, 
Daryl is such a good tracker. How did he not notice there were no footprints going out from there that belonged to to, to Eugene? Mm-hmm. How did he not notice? I don't know. They were just too frazzled. I think there were too many things going on, and, you know, it just... I mean, things kind of get kind of crazy real quick for an yeah. instant there. So maybe they just weren't thinking, you know, I don't know, but. Yeah, oh, I was Eugene. very, dis- I mean, because Eugene is not that fast moving. He is, no. you know, and I'm just, I'm shocked, actually. And and I'm sure that there's a reason for, you know, it's, it's plotting forward and everything. But man, considering how good Daryl is at tracking and how fast Daryl and Rosita are in comparison to Eugene. Yeah. Although at this point, my suggestion would be, honestly, is I would go back and set fire to that building. Totally. I mean, straight up, you know, Daryl's got his crossbow, you know, rags and and gasoline and, and, and a little bit of fire and just set the place on fire. It's not going to be that, with all that gunpowder, it would not be that difficult to make the place go up. Yeah, that's Because there's true. a whole bunch of open gunfire, or yeah. gunpowder. So, you know, a cup, you know, you don't even, honestly, at that point, you don't even really even need the crossbow. You need a rock with a rag, gasoline, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, you know, light and throw. I mean, literally, that's all they would have to do. And that's what I would do. I know, I, I think they are trying to save it so that they can use it for bullets. But you know what? The era of bullets are coming to an end. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They, they just are. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of Simon, like, not Simon, um, Eugene, I mm-hmm. feel like he was so wretched toward, oh, yeah. um, you know, the Father Gabriel. I'm like, uh-huh. man, he is awful. What's wrong with him? He is ridiculous. He has, he has completely given himself over to Negan, mm-hmm. and and I think, I think the last remaining trace of any empathy he had for the other group when Rosita said to him, "We're going to put you in a dark mm-hmm. closet and only bring you out." That was it. That was the last cut to the ties that he had remaining with the other group. Yeah. And I so, know you kind of held out hope for Eugene a little bit, but I didn't. I'm like, that guy is done. He's he's done. He is not going to redeem himself. I feel like yeah. he's still not. I, You know, I, I guess the first episode of him being there, I thought, you know, he's playing some kind, you know, because Eugene can be very cunning. And he is very smart. And I really thought, ooh, he's playing kind of a long game to get their... Um, to get their trust and then he is just gonna you know waylay them Mm -hmm. and but but yeah it quickly ended yeah and i there was a brief moment of hope when he got when he he freed gabriel and and the doctor but even right after that i'm like "Mm, no that was just him trying that was that was not for him to do redemption that was just him trying to sleep at night yeah you know it had nothing to do with doing the right thing it was just him trying to clear his conscience enough for him to sleep yeah i mean because even he knows at this... he's doing the wrong thing yeah i mean but even at this point father gabriel has a bigger pair than he does i mean mm-hmm. he's can't see anything he's still sick and he's still trying to sabotage them he's like mm-hmm. i don't want them to hurt my people so yeah. You know, even he's trying, and he's all, like, in a state where he really should be laying down in somewhere. Like, go take yeah. a seat, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I mean, now, another thing he could be doing, depending on his job, he could be just, like, half-filling him with, you know, he could be dumping out some of the, the gunpowder. Yeah. <laughs> the half charges, and then going ahead and putting the, the seal on there tight. There's no way that, at that point, that Eugene could even tell if it's a good bullet or a bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Eugene is the worst. Okay, so we know know he is like 100% team Negan. And, Mm -hmm. you know, talking about, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Michonne's attempt at, you know, kind of trying to wave the white flag or, you know, trying to get him to calm down. He was like, you know, when he read, when she read Carl's letter, he was Mm -hmm. like, eh, who cares about that? (laughs) Like, basically, like, whatever. This is yeah. all Rick's fault. Who cares? I don't care about any of that. Like, dang. Okay. And, you know, and it kills me because, I mean, 
Rick and Negan from the first time they have met have been antagonistic. Yeah. You know, they are they are the two alpha males and, and they don't want to be in the same room with each other. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they just don't. Right. Um I don't think even prior to the apocalypse, if these two guys had been in the same room together, I don't think they would have liked each other. I mean, mm-hmm. that that's just you know, it, it doesn't even have anything to do with you know, the, the apocalyptic nature of their relationship. I really don't think that they would just, I, I get the impression they would not like each other, period. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, but they're, that they're the sad. quintessential <laughs> two pair, you know, they're two alpha males, right? Mm-hmm. No one's going to concede. I mean, if they're both yeah. alphas, no one's going to back down. Um, well, but well, I, I do feel the way they've set it up, I feel like Rick will yeah. back down. Um, in a different maybe he might not say okay we surrender let's work together but i think he's going to make a crucial decision where obviously negan is going to survive i really feel that way now um yeah but i don't think that rick is going to because at this point we we know there is no concessions okay negan has made it very clear yeah this is not you know where we go in and do a judicious killing this is we will wipe them out and start over again yeah which again is just dumb on his part um then again rick has done a lot of really stupid things where he could have gotten more of the people on negan's side over to his side if he had not been quite so brutal you know and I, i'm still not confident of that because people are more scared of negan than they are of hopeful i mean like even thinking I, about simon's little group of people he didn't have a big group he had a small group yeah i was really hoping there was going to be more of them mm-hmm. do you know why <laughs> Because I knew Negan was going to take him out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was, so, cause every person that Simon brought over that Negan was going to kill would be one less savior to go after Rick's group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was hoping it was going to be like half of Negan's people. Mm. I really was. I was, you know, or have it just be flat out rumble in the jungle between the two of them. Yeah. And I hate to say this, but like Simon, he was t- way too cocky. Like people knew he was crazy. I mean, it even came mm-hmm. out that he was the one that murdered all of the ocean, the men of Oceanside. It was mm-hmm. really Simon. And so yeah. I think people knew this, but if it was say Dwight that has started this uprising, I think it could have went very differently. But Dwight would have done it for a very different, yes. I mean, very different point. Yes. You know, Simon is nuts, and he, like Negan, wanted power. Mm-hmm. Simon is, or I mean, Dwight is, I, I don't know. Dwight's not a leader, but if he were to try and take over the group, it would be a little more, I, I don't want to go with compassionate, but humane. I feel like Simon's going to be the one left in, not Simon, because obviously he's dead, but Dwight is going to be the one left in charge. I do. When it's all said and done and the dust settles, it's going to be Dwight. He's going to be the one. Someone has to take the lead with the remaining people that are alive from the saviors. I would be okay with that right now. Yeah. And and I could see where if, because um, I have seen the previews and and we do see, uh, Dwight and he's wearing the you know the sweatshirt with the A on it you Mm -hmm. know like um, Daryl had Mm -hmm. and and Negan's got him out parading him around I at a crucial point I could see if if Dwight could take an advantage of rallying enough of Negan's people over to him and saying there is we can be together all we have to do is get rid of Negan Mm -hmm. we can end this all we have to do is get rid of this guy yeah And I mean, honestly, I feel like he would have a leg to stand on because everyone has seen how psycho he is. He strangled Simon in front of Mm -hmm. everyone. I mean, he strangled that man to death and then put him on the wall. He's a walker on the wall on that fence. Oh, yeah. You know, and and so I don't know. I mean, because, you know, next week's episode, you know, next Monday's episode is this is a season finale. We get an hour and a half. And I, I don't know. I'm. I am really, and, and I really do believe that it, it, Oceanside is going to show up. You know, mm-hmm. now that they've had that reveal, you know, it was not Negan. It, it was Simon. That's how all the guys ended up disappearing. And then, of course, we've had the few moments with uh, <clears throat> Adam. Is that his name? Aaron. Aaron, thank you. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and, and, and there he sits, you know, trying to struggle and stay through. And at first they've been all ignoring him. And they're like, is he dead? You know? <laughs> like, I think he has, does he have any water? Does he, yeah. is he out here without nothing? Like, what is yeah. he doing? And, and you can see, but he's like, you know, you guys are just living here in fear. You're never going to have anything else. And, and they are a dead colony, whether they want to admit it or not. If they don't let anyone new in, if there are no men there, there's just the female children, you know, they're all female. They, mm-hmm. they can't. And if they never let anyone else in, their colony's already out. dead. Yeah, they'll die out. Um, you know, but, you know. I kind of, st- even though, I mean, I guess it was good that we got to see, you know, Aaron doing his thing, trying to persuade them by putting himself through misery. Uh, yeah. But even in the end there, they never actually said okay or yes or anything after his little speech. But I do agree with you. I think at the, you know, in the ninth hour, they will come out like the very last moment came out, come out and try mm-hmm. to do something. But I mean, they better because otherwise I would have felt like seeing any time with the Oceanside group would have been a waste of time, a yeah. waste of space. So this is, this is kind of what I'm foreseeing. So, you know, we've got Rick's group now operating on bad Intel. All right. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. And there's no way Dwight can, you know, go, oh, God, no, 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 yes, no. But, you know, the no one luck. thing that I hope is that they're smart <laughs> enough to realize where the intel is coming from. And number one, don't forget, Daryl does not trust Dwight at Dwight. all still. Right. So I'm, you know, so I think they're going to, you know, I don't think they're going to fully commit. So mm-hmm. here's my thought. So we, we've got Rick's group, you know, going out and, and seeing how much of this is really true. And we've got Negan's group coming out. And then at some point, I think what's going to happen is Negan's group is going to get into a vice because Oceanside is going to show up and put the, you know, so they're going to be trapped between Oceanside and, and, and Rick's group. Mm-hmm. And at that point, that would be when Dwight's moment would be to say, hey, we can end this all. All we got to do is kill this guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, because I do because I do know while they do have bullets, I mean, yep. then again, we also, you know, that we can hold out hope, cross our fingers that, that, um, Daryl and, and, uh, Rosita will just, like I said, fireball that entire ensemble, because if they do that, at that point, Negan is, he's in a, he's in a bind. He's in a hell of a bind. Yeah. Because without all those bullets, there's no way that they can take on all the, everyone there, you know, at, uh, the, at Rick's group simply because there's not enough of them between all the ones that they lost from the walkers all the ones that they lost in the battle and then all the ones they killed from Simon's group you know his his warriors are very depleted at this point he's got maybe a third of them that he had at the beginning of the season yeah so uh, <clears throat> although you know, I, 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 I want to mention one thing yeah go ahead did you find it as weird that all the other guys never made it back to Negan's group, but um, yeah. what's his name? Gregory managed yeah. to make it back. Yeah, but I remember like that last episode. Some of his guys, you know, some of the saviors were trying to keep the walkers out the gate. They were trying mm-hmm. to come at the gate, you know. So I think most of them were like, "Let's just not die." Instead of trying to think about running away, but of course, Gregory is only for himself. Who cares? I'm just gonna right. run. Mm-hmm. So I just I just found that ironic that there's that whole group of Negan's guys holed up in a barn, you mm-hmm. know, and they didn't make it back. But Gregory, you know, the spineless did. You know, I don't think they wanted. I don't know. Maybe they did want to go back. I don't know. I. Well, I don't it was know. they were slowed down by the two guys that were bitten. Yeah. You know, that were injured. So I mean, there was that. But again. It just, I, I just found it very funny. You know, Gregory, who escaped with them, obviously chose not to stay with the group with the injured people and, you know, headed out on his own, off. which surprises me in a way because Gregory is a coward. But, he is a coward. He's just as bad yeah. as Eugene in some ways. He's worse, in my opinion. Yeah. He, I mean, he, because he's, Eugene is a savant, you know. Um, Eugene, or uh, Gregory is just a moral morally reprehensible human being with yeah no good points to him 
I feel like they're equally as bad, just in different ways. I mean, at this point, I really feel like, you know, no good deed goes unpunished, right? It's like, I feel like they should have just killed him. Like, forget Mm -hmm. trying to be, you know, oh, we'll just hold him prisoner. No, just kill the man. Just kill him and be done with it. Like, and I know that's not very, you know, on theme with what the, they're trying not to be, you know, horrible people. But you know what? That guy is horrible. He's horrible. Yeah. And I did notice there's this, so we know that Gregory is a coward, okay, and thinks only of himself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now he's back with Hilltop, and and we also know that Eugene is a coward, and, and but he's, he's manning up as long as he's got Negan at his back. And then we've got Father Gabriel, who is desperately trying to overcome being a coward in his past and is very much aware that he is a coward, and it shames him. And and I'm kind of, I'm wondering if there is going to be something, you know, because we've got Eugene on one side who knows he's a coward and goes, yep, that's just me, I accept it. And we got Father Gabriel who goes, I have been a coward, but I can be better on the other. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if something is going to happen between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I mean, honestly, I hate to even make any predictions at this point because it, who knows who it, it is really a crapshoot at this point. Mm -hmm. I do feel strongly about a couple of people that I think will survive this season, even though I don't want them to, including, you know, Dwight and Eugene. I somehow feel like they both will survive, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as well as Negan but that's like I still feel like with the longer episodes, some other major character is gonna die. At least one. Uh-huh. I don't know who though. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I have no clue. I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just honestly, like, I, I I honestly couldn't say at this point. I really because no one's had their their cameo moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you know other you know Simon we kind of had that big X on him because. He's been like, yeah, you know, and there was a couple of episodes revolving around him and there really hasn't been that. The only other person I can think of is Michonne. Yeah. And, and I don't think they will kill her off this season. No, I mean, like not for nothing. The girl is kind of rocking it right now, you know, with oh, yeah. Black Panther and all the other things she's doing. They're not going to kill her off right now. They're just not. And, you know, yeah. obviously we're going to set up for, you know, Morgan to leave. Right. We're going to mm-hmm. see the last of him. So whatever they have plans for him, he, we know he's not going to die, but he's not going to stay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's so much going on. All I know is this. I know this with certainty is that. At the end of that finale, I better feel satisfied. I know I'm not going to get everything I want, but I better not be sitting there with a crazy cliffhanger where I'm like, what? What just happened? Nothing got resolved. I better not get that. I better not. I have, what I have seen is there have been assurances, you know, because, you know, last season there was the Negan cliffhanger and everything, and it really upset people. Mm-hmm. And they've been kind of quietly saying that that's not going to happen. There will be resolution, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of this. So, yeah. I mean, there will still be things that will pull us back in for next season, but there will be a resolution of this right. situation. Now, again, those are, you know, quiet whispers as they, you know, go along. But I'm I'm hoping that is the actual truth because I am afraid that if they left, if they leave it as a cliffhanger like they did with, with Negan last season, um, I think they're going to lose a lot of viewers who are just going to be, I'm done. I'm just, I'm done with this whole Negan thing. We've been building up for two and a half seasons now with this whole thing or yeah. whatever, or season and a half. And I'm done. <laughs> you yeah, know? I mean, cause they honestly, they lost a big, they lost a, not maybe not a big, <laughs> but they lost a group of people, a group of watchers when Negan came back and was splitting people's skulls open, people were not happy with that. They did not yeah. like it. And so uh, an exodus of some watchers happened at that point. Mm-hmm. And I hope they do whatever they can. You know, it's already said and done. You know, it's mm-hmm. signed, sealed, delivered at this point to stop oh, yeah. that from happening at the end of this season, you know. And I think they have been aware of that. And I think they were aware that their numbers were kind of dropping, which is why in the mid-season finale we... You know, we saw kind of a new 
direction, a new surge of people, you know, some a new director. Was it director? Showrunner. Showrunner. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, I, they have made these moderate changes, and I think they are aware. So, hopefully, they will not leave us in, the, in a terrible lurch. Mm-hmm. I want... I, I, I don't need everything wrapped up, but I need... I need this situation resolved. Yes. Because that's all this season has been about is yes. this upcoming confrontation between the two of them and the two groups that I am I am ready for resolution because come on people, let's get it done with. Yes. Yeah. I mean, let's get this <laughs> over with already. There's so many other groups and things to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of source material to pull from. So I totally anticipate if they do wrap this up like they're promising, um, then we're going to obviously have an introduction to a new situation before it's all said and done. Just well, kinda... and we've got, you know, Georgie's group, Georgie, right? Yeah, which the they're woman. kind of, whisk- they're, you know, people are murmuring, you know, they're all speculating uh-huh. that she could be from this group called the Commonwealth, which I right. don't know, but that's the speculation. You know, but I'm, I'm kind of, you know, because we've got that, and we've got the introduction of the helicopter, which, you know, may or may not mean mm-hmm. something. You know, mm-hmm. Oceanside, I, I know, is going to step in yeah. next season, or this, you know, so there's going to be, you know, that whole new group, and, you know, which, you know, so, I mean, there's all these things that can be going on. We don't need this situation with Megan to go on no. any longer. <laughs> no, but, you know, at that same time, I kind of wish Oceanside would just fade away because they are so boring to me. Unless they, like, you know, with the new situation, maybe there's mm-hmm. some guys back there, maybe... You know, they plan on changing that dynamic of that group because mm-hmm. as it is right now, they are boring to watch. Every time they come on the screen, I'm like, oh, God, not them. Please. You know, but I, I would like to point the one good thing about their group right now is um, Oceanside would be a very good place for all of them to kind of retreat a little bit to lick their wounds and, and, and heal up before they start heading back out again. Because Oceanside is, for the most part, pretty damn safe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not exposed, you know, and most people don't know about it. So I, I'm going to say that because even Simon wasn't a, never went to that particular village, you know. Yeah. Uh, so nobody really knows of its existence. So that would be a good place for them to kind of regroup a little bit, you know, so they could I could see maybe at the end of the show them all going back to Oceanside to have some fish and have a nap. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would be okay with that. I think me and you both are on the same page with, you know, as far as Negan's storyline, no halving it there. No cliffhangers yeah. there. They need to wrap that Resolve off. It, it needs to be definitive one way or the other, regardless if we like it or don't like it. It needs to be done. And then the rest, you know, it's kind of open. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and it is kind of interesting because the Oceanside people actually have a lot of children. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all female, but there are a lot of them <laughs> and compared to all the other groups. So, you know, I mean, I think it's important that the Oceanside people do start interacting with the rest because, you know, just from a, a standpoint of, you know, surviving the apocalypse, you know, they, they need to, you know, band together with some other groups. They cannot remain as they are. They just can't. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know, the good thing that I want to point out about this episode is it was very good. I mean, it's been on par. They have been delivering pretty consistently good episodes since we've returned Uh from break. It's a clear difference. And Mm -hmm. with that, I do feel confident that the the finale will be what we want it to be one way or the other. We will. I think we will get what we want if we don't. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Well, and, you know, because I was, you know, we were both kind of there when, you know, we had the mid-season finale. We're like, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, as each one of these episodes has delivered, um, you know, even the one that was kind of slow that you weren't particularly fond of, it gave us a lot of information and and, and it moved the story forward, not so much action-wise, but information-wise. Yes. Yes. And, you know, but it was a clear moving forward. So I'm, I'm hopeful um, especially with this episode, you know, enough, it wasn't draggy. Um, they, they kind of touched on a, several different places here and there. Um, and, and it's a good setup for next week. So I've got, I have my fingers crossed and I'm Me really too. hoping that they're going to deliver 
you know, something excellent. Yes, me too. Let's cross our fingers. Oh my gosh, it was a good mm-hmm. episode. So, is there anything else you think you want to talk about about this episode before we call it a, a wraps for today? Nope. I, I will be watching the Fear the Walking Dead that's coming on right afterwards. Ooh, so, you know, I don't yay. even have to remember. It's just going to be there. So, yes. and, and I guess that crossover for Morgan is supposed to come immediately yes. as, from the end. And then he's going to be on the other one. So we're yes. going to see that transition. And so I'm kind of looking forward to that. Me too. And I mean, I really hope, you know, that they have made some good changes there as well. Because, I mean, you know, I was watching that show, but I was hanging on like by the skin of my teeth. You know, I was, I am mm-hmm. ready to drop that show. So this first episode better be off the chain. That's all I got. Oh yeah. Say. It if it's good amazing. enough to call, if it's good enough to hold my attention next Sunday, I will give it three episodes. If it leaves yes. me absolutely cold, I'll be like, well, sorry, Morgan, it was nice knowing you click. Yeah. You know. But you know what? I don't know if you knew this or not, but the early reviews, like people who had early access to the first three episodes of this uh-huh. season, they are saying positive things about it. So the you know the quote unquote you know critics are mm-hmm. enjoying it and they're all saying you don't need to see the past episodes to be able to jump in here which is important because cool. we talked about that there's yeah. no way people were going to go back and rewatch stuff that they missed right. so you know with I'm, all of these new characters including morgan um they have enough to almost like do a restart almost re- yeah <laughs> you know Cause, so because my thought of going back and catching up on all the seasons I missed is kind of the same feel leads to the same feeling of sloshing through vomit. Ooh. You know, that's something <laughs> I want to do. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, just letting you know yep. that's how I, I feel. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but other than that, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to this, this upcoming episode and, and even looking forward to, to, to this new restart for the you know fear of the walking dead i'm gonna cross my fingers because i really wanted to watch i wanted so badly to, to like that show yeah and uh so we'll see i know i'm gonna cross my fingers for you thank you all right all right everyone we are done for today thank you for tuning in for those of you that are live we appreciate you being here and for those of you listening after thank you for streaming and downloading we appreciate that just as much and so we will see you guys on sunday and until then happy viewing bye everyone bye-bye if you enjoyed today's the walking dead special live episode and you would like to show your support there are a few things you can do head on over to apple podcast and leave a positive five-star review you can follow both myself and lisa on twitter please follow the shelf addiction podcast on spreaker the only place where you can listen live and get broadcast notifications so that you never miss a live episode most importantly you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy the walking dead Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy viewing.